Welcome to Knee of the Curve, the point of most extreme change. I'm Emmett Short. Elon Musk just showed off his ginormous chrome middle finger to Jeff Bezos. The full stack, super heavy and Starship. I don't know what's more erect, the rocket or the crowd full of space nerds. Not to be outdone, Jeff has been tweeting about his big new accomplishment, a live action Lord of the Rings on Amazon. Jeff saw Peter Jackson's movies and thought, you know what would make these better? A lower budget, shittier effects, and worse actors. Hey Bezos, wanna be as popular as Elon? Start by learning the difference between nerds and dorks. Elon's sales pitch for Mars was, it's gonna be cramped, dangerous, difficult, very hard, and you might die. Yeah, it'll be like working at a Tesla factory, but with less racism. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Tesla fans. I'm one of you. That was a joke. Obviously, going to Mars is not going to solve racism. Thank you, Skillshare, for being a sponsor of the channel. If you want to support the channel and your own brain, click the link in the description for a free one-month premium membership. More on that at the end. One of my favorite things was just how many jokes he snuck in. Orbital refilling. We were going to do an animation of this, but it uh, looked a bit wrong. Um, <laughs> it is a fluid transfer. Uh, I play a little Barry White. Anyway. With Starship, we're aiming for full and rapid reusability. Success is one of the possible outcomes. The booster is, is going to take off and then fly back to the launch tower and uh, aspirationally land on the arms, which uh, it does sound insane. If it does come in too fast and shear off the arms, then I guess it will be a farewell to arms. The dad jokes, they're only gonna get worse. The critical threshold to pass one of the most important great filters for any species is to have the other planet no longer dependent on, on the original planet. And this is the first point in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it has been possible. I mean, let that sink in. I mean, if there's a sink, let it in. If still knocking at the door, I mean, it's a sentient sink. A <laughs> sentient sink? That's a good story. Let him in. The sales pitch for going to Mars, far from being <laughs> some sort of escape hatch, it's going to be cramped, dangerous, difficult, very hard work. You might die. That's the sales pitch. I hope you like it. <laughs> it's basically this. You won't survive this mission. OK. You'll have to make the ultimate sacrifice. Sack. I did say people were gonna die. But he did do the real sales pitch for Mars too. There could be some calamity where we do ourselves in, or there's a natural disaster. Eventually, the sun will expand. It might take a few hundred million years, so don't hold your breath. But the sun will expand and destroy all life. We are life stewards, life's guardians. The creatures that we love, they can't build spaceships, but we can, and we can bring them with us. So that's like the, the defensive or the life insurance reason, but there's also an inspiring reason. Life can't just be about solving problems. They have to be things that inspire you. When you wake up in the morning, you're excited about the future. Being a multi-planet species and being a space faring civilization and making science fiction, not fiction forever, I think that's one of those things. That's what fires me up the most. Let's go out there and find out what this universe is all about. Are there other species out there? I and mean, we want to go find out what the heck's going on. <laughs> How do we get here? What's the meaning of life? 42. But, what, yeah, but what's the question? If we go out there and we explore the galaxy, and we can find out some of these questions. And it would just be very exciting to do that. The other thing that stuck out to me is when I remembered Elon isn't just some money guy. He's not just a good CEO. He's the chief engineer. These are his designs. A Raptor 1 was 185 tons of thrust. A Raptor 2 is 230 tons of thrust. So you can see the difference between a V1 and V2. A V1 looks like kind of like a Christmas tree <laughs> spaghetti pile. A lot of fiddly bits. And V2 is greatly simplified while also increasing thrust at the same time. Raptor 2 costs about half as much as Raptor 1 despite having much more thrust, a much easier engine to build, and a more robust engine. So Raptor 2 is pretty, pretty sick. The tower and the launch system, which I call stage zero, is as complex and difficult as either the booster or the ship. It's just as important as stage one and stage two. From a cost standpoint, it may be as little as a few million dollars per flight, maybe even as low as a million dollars per flight. These are crazy low numbers. If you were to get some kind of approval from the FAA in March, how quickly could the hardware be ready to go? We're tracking to have the regulatory approval and hardware readiness around the same time. Okay, so my thoughts. You know, it was incredibly cool to see Starship stick the landing, but it's gonna be 10 times more cool to see Super Heavy get caught in those big chopstick arms. Man, when he said a million dollars a launch, 
I was thinking that's for a hundred people. So all you need is a hundred friends with 10 K each that all want to die on Mars. No sweat. I don't think anybody's going to be paying to go to Mars. I think there's going to be corporate interests in having a base and a presence on Mars, and they're going to pay you. They're going to be shipping a bunch of people up there willing to risk their lives to potentially make a lot of money. So no, the rich are not looking at this like an escape hatch. They're looking at it as a way to ship out some of the riffraff, make it nicer here on the planet. Mars is basically gonna be the new Australia. And look, I have a really good time watching all the launches, the explosions, the successes, all of it. It's really fun. And I get upset when I see people like Bill Maher tearing it down, saying there's no reason to go to Mars, it's a waste of time, we should be spending all that money here on Earth. But I did a little math. SpaceX is worth about $100 billion. That's pretty much equivalent to all the NFL teams combined. That's just the NFL. Think of all the other sports. Even if you thought of SpaceX as just entertainment value, it's a drop in the bucket compared to all the other billions we're spending on frivolous entertainment. Plus, I don't see a lot of groundbreaking science coming from the NFL. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you haven't done the trial yet, you really just owe it to yourself. It's so nice. Recently, I wanted a render of some non-existent Tesla AR glasses, and I took this class by Emil Neal on Element 3D in Adobe After Effects, and it taught me how to do it so fast. There's a ton of classes for creative stuff, but they also have like code writing or how to do your taxes better. The classes are extremely high quality. You don't have to sit through any ads for anything. You just get straight to the knowledge. The first thousand of my subscribers to use my link get a one month subscription for free to Skillshare Premium. Watch this video to stay up to speed on how fast you're being left behind. Leave your thoughts in the comments, even the weird ones, especially the weird ones. I have algorithmic Stockholm syndrome, so like and share, or take it to the next level and join Patreon and help make high tech low brow. And if you wanna be a part of the team and write jokes, DM me on Twitter and Discord. Click subscribe or let the AI radicalize you, your choice. See you in the future.